The teammate dynamic they've got at the moment, you know, it's a very positive one where both drivers are pretty, pretty happy to play their role. Ultimately, I'm sure Checo does want to be winning, <laughs> but he has to understand, you know, that it's a, it's a zero sum sport. There's only going to be one winner at every race and you can't always, you know, everyone can't be, everyone can't finish a race happy. But we know from the way Verstappen and, and Daniel Ricciardo, the way that, well, the way it played out primarily in 2018, but also before that, when they were teammates, when he's challenged by his teammate, it's not always the best thing for his mentality and his performance. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. You need a certain element of that to push to push him at all, though, because it could be easily possible that he gets too comfortable. Um, do you think that Red Bull, you know, are pretty happy with the, their driver pairing at the moment? They they were shutting down rumors a couple of weeks ago about them kind of searching for other options and stuff. Do you think, yeah, that that's um, you know, the path forward for them is to go with the Mercedes model in a way where you have a pretty clear first and second driver. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would think so. But also, I love Czech. I would love to see them let, like, Checo race some of it just because I like Checo. But I feel like the dynamic they have now, it's kind of like keeping everyone happy in a way. And I feel like Checo's just happy to sit there, like, the one two that he got. I say he was delighted. He was like, yeah, even though he only came second, oh, at least I'm... My teammate came forced. Yeah. Whereas I think if it was the opposite way around and say Checo won Max didn't, there'd be a bit. Not everyone would be as happy. Happy with that, yeah, no. Whereas oh, I would love, I I would love <laughs> them to let Checo race. So I would. But it's, I, it's, a, it's a huge. Sorry, it's it's a huge element behind how Mercedes were able to dominate the constructors' championship for so long is that they were very happy to have two drivers play a role there and, you know, not have them take wins off each other and not have them get into scraps even if you know they were just distracted by the teammate dynamic in in the garage and they weren't allowing themselves to kind of fully focus on racing because they were kind of wrapped up in the element of, of the off-track drama in the sport that can be quite negative do you think that we look to Carlos Sainz next obviously as, as kind of the other important driver he's going to play a big role in this year's constructors championship I don't know how do you how do you like if, if you're him at the moment He's just got to start putting podiums in, right? Making Charles nervous. I feel like that's what he wanted to do from the start. He just... Yeah. Bucky, I guess. I don't yeah, know. He just... Sense. Yeah. He's had a bad streak so far this year. I feel like he will get back on it, though. Like, definitely. I definitely it's think not going to last long. There will be times, I feel like, during the season where he will come out on top of Charles, I think. Yeah. I don't know. The dynamic is just different. Like I feel like Ferrari are still saying at the minute it's the boat are on equal like footing, even though I don't believe it. Don't think they are. <laughs> but whereas like somewhere like Red Bull, they made it very obvious when you before they even got Checo, we are looking for a second driver. Yeah. They made it obvious. Whereas I feel like if Charles keeps up the way he is, and with signs as well, they will start saying that dynamic change. It will be. Charles is number one, you are number two. Help him out, help us out with the constructors. And if you were to, to think about, uh, you know, a driver, of it, so you, you said you were a um, McLaren fan. Do you think that their driver pairing is, is where it needs to be? No. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not loving McLaren as of right now. I love the team as a whole. I will always love them, but I don't know. I think... I think there needs to be some change. Daniel's struggling. He's struggling. I think. I think there needs to be a lot of a lot more focus put on Daniel because I think I feel like they are really focusing in on Lando because obviously he has got the long contract with them and he's a lot younger than Daniel is and he's doing a lot better. But I think I just think they need to be a little bit more invested in Daniel. And I saw on F1 Twitter that they think that as well <laughs> the other day. But I don't know. It could change this year. Look like last year we saw. The McLaren win was Daniel's win in the end and Lando came second and I don't know, I just think they I think that def yeah, it definitely got under Lando's skin quite a lot that he didn't win that race, you know. So but then at the moment he I, I don't know, it seemed like the the little bit of, of kind of interesting stuff that was in Drive to Survive season four, to me, was that you know, the the kind of insider details of like what the drivers really think of of their teammates, because they almost know that it's going to come out at the end of the season so they can sort of get away with, I don't know, being a bit more honest in the interviews, it seems like, 
even if Netflix will, you know, rinse it to the last drop of, of whatever bit of drama they can get out of it, there is some elements of truth there. And it did seem like the driver pairing at McLaren wasn't as well, it wasn't as like sort of friendly as everyone was expecting at first. And then you can see that carrying over this season. I think even now, you know, everyone's at the moment rating Lando above Daniel. And Daniel's got whatever it is, eight, nine race wins, but he's just currently like not in form. And I think week to week form is is huge in Formula One. There's a reason we're talking about Max and Charles this week. It's because of, of the way the season's played out and how important they've been in the races so far. And there's a reason Daniel Ricciardo at the moment isn't a part of that conversation because he's finishing out of the points more often than not or crashing into Carlos Sainz. So <laughs> it's it's hard to, yeah, it, it's it's hard. I guess I guess we could we could go through and kind of say similar things about most of the the older drivers in the paddock. I guess it's kind of Vettel and, and Alonso. It seems to me like Alonso really is at least outperforming Vettel. If you I think if you were to kind of yeah. their like relative performance, those are two drivers that are effectively from the same well, Alonso's older significantly, has been in Formula One for I think seven more years than than Vettel, but in terms of being superstar world champions when they were both very young and then now being the sort of old dogs of, of the paddock you can compare their performances quite a lot and i think yeah i think alonso's got him i don't know what, what do you think about about the older drivers in the paddock kimmy left last year and, and he was a big part of that conversation but now it's it's really just those two and lewis i guess alonso you know like performance wise you're noticing him a lot more he's yeah. putting in like there's some races where he's doing so well at qualifying and timing wise whereas Vettel I feel like he's just kind of in no man's land at the minute he's just he'd have a bad he's on, he's on TV tonight he's on um on British telly tonight on some like political uh, question time show so we'll see how that goes I, I think it's part some part of his like messaging he's on he's gone on telly and he's going to be asked about I don't know whatever the British press can come up with to ask him about but it, it doesn't really seem like the big part of his conversation is going to be on track at the moment it, it's you know it's completely fair enough that he's he's using his platform for this activism and to raise awareness about stuff he cares about um but you should be talking about that alongside his racing success and and we're not at the moment i think alonso still you still get the feeling that he's still very much in it like he's determined he wants he's still hungry yeah whereas vettel i feel like i don't know i don't think it'll be long before unfortunately yeah, yeah before agree. he retires he's just he doesn't seem like he's on the same level as Alonso when it comes to racing and what he wants from it and I don't know I feel like he's kind of dropping back a bit whereas Alonso's still going still fighting yeah but do you think that could have been really it seems like Aston Martin are the, the most underperforming team I think relative to budget and you know the fact that obviously Lawrence Stroll's net worth is like 60 70 billion or something He's happy to pour as that, you know, put pour as much of that into the team as he wants, but it, it doesn't really seem like they're getting much return on investment from that at the moment. And it could be that, you know, Sebastian Vettel, he's still a four-time world champion. He's still, you know, a, a lot of teams would be happy to to take him. And and the Aston Martin contract offer must have kind of said in it that we're going to provide you with some sort of high-performing car, and and they haven't at the moment. So I don't know. It could be. Yeah, it, it would be unfortunate if that was the end of the story, but it, but it might be, right? But I think even with back to teammate dynamic, I think you need a teammate that's going to really push it. And I think Ocon is doing a really good job at pushing Alonso. 100%. Ocon, Where... is, Ocon is brilliant. I, I think he's, he's um, yeah, consistently shown his class um, in the last few years, definitely. So I think them as a dynamic on track are great. They push each other really well, whereas I think... Lance Stroll is not really, not even in the same field. As yeah, it, it's got the, like a, every everything he does has a little asterisk on it, and it's not really like he's he's not under the same pressure as the other young drivers, and and I think you see that in his performances. Definitely, and then when you put him beside a driver like Sebastian Vettel, it's like you can't even compare them. So he, I think he might need someone to just push him that little bit further. That's close to home in his own team. 